for their solemn fast, a gift of faith from majors past, this land which binds us lovingly to faith and hope and charity. The In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. <coughs> Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, and let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Yeah. 
it revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them are just. They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold, and sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the comb. Lord, you had the words of everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves and the money changers seated at their tables, making a whip of cords. He drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus, 
was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about human nature, for he himself knew what was within the human person, the gospel of the Lord. Today we hear St. John's version of Jesus cleansing the temple. This episode, with slight variations, but the same basic episode, appears in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. However, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospel, it appears at the end of Jesus' life, and it's kind of the final straw that ends up leading eventually to his execution by crucifixion. But in John's gospel, it is placed much, much earlier, at the beginning of his public ministry, more as a kind of a program for what Jesus will do during the years of his public ministry. And the final straw of John's gospel is when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And so many come to believe in him because of that, that the authorities decide to seek his death. Either case, and it's debated, pretty sure it didn't happen twice, so are Matthew, Mark, and Luke right, or is John right? And today's not really the place to debate that issue. But whoever is right with it, the context of this had to do with the whole sacrificial system of Judaism. Animals that had to be sacrificed for different occasions, some as sin offerings and some in other types of occasions. And then, and, and that came out of a, a, a kind of a nomadic existence, if you wanted to make a sacrifice to God, you sacrificed something that was important to you and your flock. Your animals were the most important things to you. But then the system had grown up of actually selling these animals right there in the temple courtyard, which had, was not something described in the Bible. And then the system grew up that it was not proper to buy an animal to be offered in sacrifice using the Roman currency. And so they had special temple money. And the money changers would take so much Roman currency, ex exchange it for a temple currency, and of course there's always profit to be made whenever money is exchanged. And so here Jesus comes in then and sees this whole system, animals being sold everywhere, money changers taking the day-to-day -day money, making a profit off it and giving a special money to purchase the animals so that they can then be taken and you would pay the priests to offer them in sacrifice. And Jesus just couldn't take it anymore. Up goes the table, out goes the money, and out go the animals. Whether at the beginning of his ministry or at the end, it becomes programmatic for the new ways that Jesus is bringing when we read the simple commandments, the church hung on to those. But what the church did not hang on to is all the complicated system of sacrifice and all the different rules that went with that. It became an issue in the early days of the church. How much of this do we hang on to and how much do we not? And through the inspiration of Jesus' own example, and I'm sure this episode 
even though it's placed at different places in the gospel, was a big part of that. And also through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the church decided that the commandments and a few basic other things had to be hung on to and that the rest of it had been changed or taken over or replaced by Christ. And so Jesus would be able to say, yes, of the law, love God with all your heart, soul, and everything else, and there's a second commandment like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And he didn't seem so concerned about all these other things, and especially when systems became built up on them simply for the purpose of enriching the priests and all those who worked selling animals, exchanging money, and worked around the temple. One final note, when that temple was destroyed in the year 70 AD by the armies of Rome, it's never been rebuilt. And that whole sacrificial system ceased to exist in Judaism. About 20 years ago, I asked an old rabbi friend of mine who's still alive, I think he'll turn 100 this year. I asked him what he thought if, if the temple lands ever came back into Jewish hands and the temple was rebuilt, would they bring back a system of sacrifice? And he said, I don't think so. I think that's gone now. What the rabbis teach now is a sacrifice from the heart and not the sacrifice of blood from this or that type of bird or animal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, a holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And together we place all of our needs and all of our prayers before God, our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, as he brings hope to the church in Iraq and a message of peace to that war-torn country, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Christian, who has asked his priests and every family to learn from the example of St. Joseph and to trust in his intercession, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For impoverished nations who lack resources to fight the pandemic, and for church organizations and donors who work to assist them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the many people impacted heavily by the pandemic restrictions, especially the elderly, particularly those at home alone, or in long-term long care facilities. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are suffering from physical or mental illness, for their families and for people who work hard to help and to heal them, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For families facing more challenges and added stress, imposed by restrictions on work, travel, and school, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, 
Joan Hall, Doreen Walls, Bambi McKinnon, Camilla Melanson, Patricia Joyce, and Ken Gill. And for each person mourning the death of someone they love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all of your blessings. We bring all of our needs and our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them and to answer them through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And let us be seated while our altar is prepared. And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we, who beseech pardon for our own sins, may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all of the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Lois McHugh, Patricia Patton, and deceased members of her family, William John Seaman, Margaret and Brandy Bennett, Bernie Lunny, Millie Lubier, and Rose McLaughlin. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes down from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Hopefully next week we'll be able to have more people coming to church with the same spreading and all the other conditions the same. Uh, it's not necessary to re-register, but it is important when you get an invitation, just take a moment and just send back thanks or okay or something. The fellow who works very faithfully on these uh, asked me to kind of remind people that if he really appreciates those who answer back, either yes or no, they're coming. And if it's no, no problem, then he can invite someone else. So just a little friendly reminder. The Lord be with you. And bow down your heads. Direct, O oh Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful. And in your kindness, grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. And after receiving Holy Communion, go in the peace of Christ.